Name it to tame it. That is today's topic. It's scientific, it's practical, and it's super effective. So for the last several weeks, we've been talking about navigating change, mastering our transitions, and making our dreams come true. And when change happens, especially when it's unexpected, we can often experience intense emotions. And this is also true when we're going after our dreams and goals. Intense emotions are part of the deal. And when our emotions hijack us, they can take over our ability to express ourselves effectively, to problem solve, and to make good decisions. Like, have you ever snapped at your kid and then later felt like crap about it? Have you ever lost it in a meeting and then later regretted it? Have you ever experienced road rage and quickly realized that your mother-in-law is right next to you or your four-year-old's in the back seat and then all of a sudden you're overwhelmed with shame? This happens because the animal instinct part of our brain, the fight or flight response, has kicked in, it's taken over, and we are no longer thinking from the executive part of our brain up here. We are operating from what Dr. Dan Siegel calls the prehistoric downstairs brain. When this happens, we cannot be trusted. When Paul says he doesn't like my idea in a meeting, my little lizard brain, it doesn't know the difference between somebody not liking my idea or someone cut me off in traffic or someone maybe not liking me or maybe I look a little dumb. My little lizard brain doesn't know the difference between those situations and a real life tiger or a bear chasing me. So we get defensive. We come out swinging either literally with punches or verbally with personal attacks or psychologically by maybe using some passive aggressive techniques. And when we get stuck in that part of our brain, that downstairs lizard brain, we often spin out into victimhood, ruminating, blaming, and complaining about our situation to anyone and everyone, whether or not they listen or not. And we're doing that inside of our heads with ourselves too. In situations like that, we've been hijacked by our emotions. Now to be clear, our emotions are actually a really good thing and we don't want to get rid of them. Emotions inform us and they are the fuel that propel us into action. Positive emotions, they tell us what we can Care about and they give us energy to create what we want in our lives, in our work, and in our relationships. And negative emotions, they tell us what to avoid. If, for example, you're walking down a dark alley and you get that sense of fear, that's a good thing. It motivates us to get the heck out of there. Emotions are a core aspect of the human experience. Emotions protect us and they make us feel alive. But when emotions overwhelm us and they prevent us from being the person, the leader, the parent, or the friend that we want to be in times of uncertainty, when we're in the midst of change, challenge, and opportunity, like we've been talking about in the Making Hope Happen series, we need to have a simple tool that can help us calm that limbic system down. So we can essentially be a force for good and show up to our challenges in a way that is effective and in a way that makes us feel really good about ourselves. Name it to tame it is a great tool to help us do that. The phrase name it to tame it was coined by a guy named Dr. Daniel Siegel, and he's an author and a psychiatrist. The basic idea is that when we experience intense negative emotions, blood rushes to our downstairs brain, it becomes super active. It's like, I'm scared, I'm scared, danger, danger, danger. And if we can get the executive upstairs brain to name the emotion that's being experienced in the downstairs brain, blood flow to the downstairs brains not only slows down, but the upstairs brain, it releases these soothing neurotransmitters downstairs, which calms the amygdala down, helping us shift out of that fight or flight response and access more our executive brain, the upstairs brain, which is what's responsible for planning, for decision-making, problem-solving, self-control, and acting with our long-term goals in mind. It's the part of our brain that helps us show up to challenge, to change, and to opportunity more effectively. So how do you actually use the Name It to Tame It tool? Well, first, you need to notice when you're experiencing those intense feelings. Second, take a breath. I like to breathe through my nose for a count of five into my belly, hold for one, and then out through my nose again for a count of seven. If I'm in a space to be able to do it, I'll do it five times, which is about a minute. It's like a minute breath meditation. Third, get curious. Check in with your body for clues. Maybe your heart's racing or you have butterflies in your stomach. Maybe you're being a little short with a loved one. Or maybe you notice yourself withdrawing or turning away from a situation. When I'm experiencing some intense emotions, I'll notice that my jaw gets tense. It's, it's often associated with anxiety, which pops up when I'm scared. And it also happens to pop up when I'm excited too, which is why I relate so much to the saying that fear is just excitement without the breath. And then the fourth step is to consider what emotion 
might this be? Pause and think about it. Are you scared? Are you mad or sad? Now, if you're having a hard time labeling your emotions, don't feel bad about it. Most of us don't have emotional literacy. And so use something like this. This is an emotional uh, wheel. And I've been using this for the past uh, four or five months, just trying to better understand and connect to what I'm experiencing in my body so I can better navigate the change that I'm in and go after my dreams and goals. If you don't happen to have like a printer that you can print something out like this, there are phone apps that you can use as well to help you better understand what emotion you might be experiencing. A quick little note here, if you're in a leadership position or if you're a teacher, a parent or a coach, I definitely recommend you take time to try to develop your skill set around emotions and increase your ability to recognize them and to label them for yourself so that you can better support others in increasing their own ability to recognize and label their emotions so they can handle pressure situations, so they can handle stress and they can navigate change in life more effectively. Well, that's it for day 85 in the Making Hope Happen series. Name it to tame it. Experiencing intense emotions are part of life, they're part of change, they're part of being human. Learning to accurately name them can help us calm our nervous system, access our executive brain, and increase our ability to navigate change and go after our dreams and goals. If you got value today, give me a thumbs up. If you're feeling it, share your insights and actions in the comments below. And if you happen to know someone who you think would benefit from seeing this video, please share it with them. Until next time, have an awesome night and I will see you tomorrow.